it's kids out there that are my age or younger that are being abused, uh, mistreated, and they're not bad kids. Um, sometimes we can be misunderstood, but we are not you no know, off the wild kids where we'll just do anything that we feel like. Um, sometimes, you know, we might get upset or depressed and we might make wrong decisions. Um, but I asked, you know, not to hold it against the youth. I think it would have made a bigger difference in my life if I would have first got put into a foster home and not a group home setting because bonding with another parent that's not of my own, I think they would have achieved me to go further and um, I think I would be more successful. When we were in a safe environment, um, I lived in Winterville in a house, which I never actually lived in a house before, which was also new to me. I went to a school that I actually stayed in for two years, elementary school. I used to move from school to school, shelter to apartment, family members. So the fact that I actually was grounded in one place for a long period of time really helped me. I have been through six foster homes, but I would have to say that the main one that has really supported me would be my first foster home because when I first got there, I actually learned how to spell my name and I learned my ABCs. So she was the most encouraging person to me. And, you know, and throughout life, you would see these people with children that didn't seem to appreciate them and you're like, gosh, what if that was my child? You know, I'd hate for that to be happening to my child. So I wanted, you know, children to have what our children had, the love and security and stuff. We were just going to foster. We just wanted to be a bridge to help children either get back with their natural parents or hopefully find parents that would love them and treat them like we treated our children. We thought all children deserved that. Well, we've been able to be a bridge for quite a few say some of them were very temporary just just passing through uh, their their better place was uh, you know a short run where some of them has taken a good while to before they were reunited with family or uh, adopted well any time that we were able to be a part of the child's life and it end up in a good situation, whether it's going back to a family or to an adoptive situation. If it was a positive outcome, then it was rewarding. I mean, that's what we were there for, is for the child, to get the child over that bridge to the, through that rough time in life. And take that baby in from day one and rock them and love them and treat them like your own, then they have a chance to go out, whether it's back with their family who needed some help or onto a family who's waiting for a child. It's just, to me, that makes all the difference in the world with this child. I have uh, actually four foster uh, children in my home, uh, three boys and one girl. Uh, I also have uh, three children of my own, which is girls. So I'm surrounded by quite a bit of, you know, uh, females in the house. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's a great opportunity to, to see the whole family entwined with one another, uh, come from different backgrounds, um, which uh, I think is really awesome and a, a great reward for me as well. Uh, our goal is to make sure that every child get a great opportunity to succeed and, and to become uh, uh, a great U.S. citizen. That's one of our main goals. And with the support of the community and everyone else that is involved, it really just makes my job just that much easier. I would say for those that are called uh, to this kind of service and for those that want to give back to the community, uh, I find that this is one of the greatest uh, rewarding um, service that anyone can give and it is community service. If you have that much love to give, there are so many children that just need somebody to care about them. And, you know, the opportunity to provide a safe place doesn't seem like much to those that do it because, you know, that comes naturally to them. But there are children that need a safe place and they need somebody to love them and just tuck them in at night and let them know that everything's going to be okay. 
A lot of times it's just the fact that a parent can't take care of a child because of maybe a job situation or an illness that's created, you know, financial burdens. There's so many little things that, that you know, help or hinder a family, you know, and, and cause them to have a need, you know, for someone to intervene. When we first met our children that um, were going to come into our home as foster children, the older three were part Hispanic. And of course, I had never been around um, many Hispanic people to, you know, to know anything about their cultures or their way of life. And I wasn't really sure how, you know, these children were nine, eight, and seven. And I didn't know how this was going to affect, you know, our relationship with them. But, you know, they were just children. They, they had, you know, the same needs that the two-year-old had that, you know, looked just like me. And I worried about how I would feel about how other people, you know, approach them and what other people would think. And it was just amazing to me how quickly they were accepted in my heart. It didn't matter if anybody else accepted them or not. They were part of me. The opportunity to be a part of getting a family back together and helping them to be, you know, a complete family as well as a, a family that was safe and, and okay was just, you know, an, an awesome thought. We have great support uh, from the Department of Social Service and, and, and that's a great thing. Um, there's no job that's too hard or too complicated that can be solved and as a team we're working together with one another and that's what actually makes things much more easy, more so and much, much, much more tougher. I've received Mother's Day cards from our, some of our children that have gone on to be adopted, you know, and be a part of their life. You know, at Christmas we may have three or four of the families there that have adopted our children so we can still be part of their life. And then you get a letter in the mail where one of your teenagers that had gone back with their dad had gone on to get married and she's had a baby and she wants us, you know, to know her baby. And it's, it's really rewarding. I love it. I just, I couldn't imagine not having this challenge or trying to make a difference. I guess probably the most rewarding thing has been to watch a nine-year-old girl turn into a 19-year-old young woman. You know, she has become very self-sufficient and very secure in who she is. And, you know, I looked at this child when she came and, you know, she wouldn't look you in the eye and she was just so bashful and shy and she wouldn't carry on a conversation with a stranger for anything. And I've watched her grow and just become a young lady and you know I guess any parent no matter you know whether your child has a special need or if your child is an average child or if your child's a genius every parent wants what is the very best for their child and you know with fostering children or adopting children I think it's the same thing you do everything you can to make what their life is going to turn out to be as good as possible and the most rewarding thing is just seeing these little people grow up and and to know that you know we've created a family and they're going to be a part of our family for a long time. Uh, to see them actually get a, a great opportunity for a new start in a new environment I think that's very rewarding. In a foster setting with a foster parent, I will be looking for um, someone to push me further, to let me know that I am somebody and that I can do better. And um, caring, um, showing me that, you know, that, that I do have someone out here to love me for who I am. Someone that, uh, that I could look like, you know, that I could look up to to say, you know, she was there. You know, I didn't give up because I had somebody to push me forward. I wouldn't have been as ready for the world as I am today without my foster parents. Don't ever, ever give up on your dreams.